All right, TCU TV. We're in here with uh, the one and only Will Stroud. Will, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Yeah, so um, happy to have you uh, on the show. What are you in town filming for exactly? I'm um, here for Verde BMX trip. Okay. Team. And so who was on that? Uh, it was Tony Nyer, Biz, Mark Martinez, and Rocco Gupsi. Yeah. Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Yeah, Giuseppe. yeah. He's a new addition to the <laughs> yeah. team. Yeah. How was that trip? It was good. It was good. We just um, we stayed here in Hollywood, Tony's house, and um, we just drove around in the van and hit a bunch of L.A. spots and found some new stuff, and uh, it was really productive. Nice. Really good. All right. So let's, let's go back. Uh, you're from Greensboro, North Carolina? Actually, I grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Yeah. I went to film school at UNC in Greensboro. Oh, okay. So... So, so what was it like uh, growing up there? The scene in Raleigh was uh, it was pretty good. It was more of a kind of trail rider scene. Right. You started riding yeah. at the what the four hundred one trails. Yeah, yeah. I started out pretty much at the four hundred one trails. Uh, met like Chris Doyle and Ryan Barrett, Corey Muth, and uh, my younger brother and I, David. We uh, met up with those guys. Um, you know, around we, I was like fifteen or sixteen when I met Doyle. I actually met him at the BMX racetrack. Met him at the racetrack. We raced for a few years together. And then, okay, um, so you raced before you started hanging out at the trail. You were doing both probably around the same time? Yeah, yeah. Kind of like got into racing first and then um, met all the guys at the track. And they were like, hey, we got awesome trails we go to. And kind of got into it that way. Nice. So what age were you when you started racing? Um, I think I was, must have been 95. So I was like 15. Okay. 15, yeah. And so soon after you became like a trail rat? Yeah, yeah. We had our trail scene out there. So we would just hit the trails every day after school. And we'd like dig a lot, ride a lot. A lot of like back then, the East Coast was really big. Yeah, the trail scene was really big, especially up, like up in the Northeast. Not so much by us, but a lot of the guys from like up Northeast, like Posh and Push, they would come down and ride our trails, and it was cool. And who were you like uh, looking up to and admiring at that time? Were there any videos or riders in particular? Oh yeah, um, like at our trail scene, we were kind of obsessed with what the guys in PA were doing, like all the guys at Posh and Push. Right. So we were big, like um, you know, like Chris Bennett was probably one of our all-time favorite riders. Right. Um, so many, so many guys, uh, almost too many to list, but guys like Chris Bennett, um, like Christopher, just uh-huh. any of the really stylish trail riders were kind of the guys we were really into at the time. Right. And, and what were the videos that like defined that era in your mind? Um, well, I guess like the first Anthem video. Right. And then like all Stu's old videos, like 1201, <laughs> um, some of the, yeah, some of the older 90s trails videos, uh, even like going back to like ride on, even though it was more like California based video, that was kinda like one of the first videos I saw that really got me into like trails and even like thinking about picking up a camera. Right. Yeah. So I was gonna say, uh, when did uh was filming always a factor for you? Were you always interested in it? Not really. Um I kinda got my first start in filming when I was good friends with Chris Doyle. We rode trails every day and he had just gotten on DK. Um, and they were starting to film the video Damn Kids. Right. And uh, Dave Frymouth was producing it, and he sent out a letter to all the guys on the DK team saying they needed people to send in footage. So Doyle was like, hey, can you try to film me at the trails? So I was like, sure. And um, I had no idea what I was doing. I actually had my, my grandma's like big like over-the-shoulder camera. Right, yeah. I was going to say, what camera was it uh, at this time? It was, uh, I don't even remember, but it was like uh, like VHSC. Like right. before, the, it wasn't even like high 8 or DV or anything. So uh, he, we would just go out to the trails every day, and he was so good and so dialed, he could just do every trick a million times. I would film it from, like, you know, 100 different angles, and then I'd eventually get a shot that was usable for so, the video. So even at that time, he was, like, an unbelievably advanced rider, like, way better than everybody else for the oh, most part? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I was, like, I rode with him every day, so I just thought everybody's level of riding was that good. But, right. But, you know, it took, it took a while to realize that everybody's. Not- was, was this pre or post his uh, props bio? That was before. Okay. Was so before. so do you remember the, the response when that came out? Because I remember it being, number one, that it was just so clear that Doyle was going to be like a force uh, contest-wise and everything, but also the the, the hilarious uh, weatherman quote. I wanted to get your, your thoughts on that, on yeah. his proposed uh, career. Yeah, yeah. The D-man, is, he's pretty funny when it comes down <laughs> to all his uh, his predictions. Yeah, he, he wanted to be a weatherman. He, that he was actually going to go to, to college for being a weatherman, but... Um, glad the bike riding thing worked out for him it really did didn't it yeah do you remember the reaction from that section though was that a big deal when or was that just like one of many like uh bits of coverage that were coming out of the scene at the time yeah i think it was maybe one of the first videos like in the late 90s where people were asking like oh where's those trails at we haven't seen those yet you know you've seen all the trails in california and pennsylvania but right you know smaller trail scenes were popping up here and there i think it might have been some of the first maybe recognized footage from our north carolina trail scene and like maybe in the bigger video 
Yeah. And so, so what was your brother like at the time? Like, what was your relationship with him? Would you film him a lot as well? Yeah, yeah. David, um, so David's four years younger than me. Okay. Um, so he's a little bit younger. But and you're how old right now? I just turned 35. Okay. I just turned 35. So my brother's 31. And uh, yeah, we've always been really close. Like, we started racing together, started riding trails. Um, he just, right, he developed so much style so fast and he was just blasting everything he was like really really talented yeah um and you know we had a couple one summer actually i think it was i think it was the summer of 99 or 2000 i can't remember exactly when but we had i think it was actually yeah, it was summer of 2000 we had the uh cfb contest in north carolina it was a it was a the, like kind of the biggest contest that I'd ever rolled through through raleigh at the time right and um aiken actually met my brother i think a few times and then he was he uh he wanted to put him on mosh right so yeah, that was a was, was that the first was that a big deal to you at the time like your brother getting sponsored yeah yeah it was awesome yeah i, I was really stoked for him um yeah we we just kind of we had uh, met doyle and we started traveling a little bit and then um yeah we made did a trip with pa and aiken was out there um and um yeah i think just just traveling and being with the right people and you know being around the right people really helped they right. would have more opportunities. Yeah, yeah. So, so he get, he gets on Mosh, and like, what are you doing around that time period? Like, when did, like you did the damn kids section. What was the next uh, project that you kind of took on after that? Um, so after that is kind of when I got to know guys like Dave Frymouth and all the props guys a little better. Uh huh. And um, I pitched the idea. I think that was right when I was starting film school, right around the time. And I just pitched him the idea. I was like, hey, let me film a North Carolina scene report. Right. And, and they were into it. So I think. Filming for that must have been like 99, 2000-ish, and that was uh, when I kind of got to know those guys a little better and started working with them. Right. And worked on, I worked with them probably for like four or five years on a bunch of issues. What was your mentality on doing like a scene report at the time? Because that's like a weird relic of, of the time, isn't it? Like the scene report. You don't really see, it used to be in magazines and, and videos all the time. Right, right. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, I took it pretty serious, like when they said I could do it. So I drove all over North Carolina and met up. Like, it's funny, like, when I talked to the props guys, I was like, I want to do this. And they just figured I'd stay in my one little local area, like Raleigh. Like right, because a lot of times a scene report was not yeah. so much a scene report. It was just kind of the dudes who you were riding with. <laughs> yeah, but I guess at the time, back then, there weren't, like, online videos. It was just a couple of magazines and a couple of video, VHS videos that come out a year. So, like, um, I was able to get a hold of, like, dudes like Dave Mir and Ryan Nyquist and tell them we're doing this thing for props. And they were, like, all about it, too. Oh, yeah. And, like, even guys like Winkleman were around back then, so... So I got to go out to Greenville a bunch and film with those guys and get to know them a little better back then too. So cool. were you like intimidated uh, by filming with somebody like Mira or was or did you take it pretty well? I mean, yeah, Mira, yeah, Dave Mira. That was like when he was kind of in his prime. Too, yeah, yeah, you know. So, but yeah, he was just he was just a normal guy riding his bike back yeah. then. But he it was cool like just to go down to Greenville and check out their you know MTV Crips houses and they had the perfect backyard mini ramps back yeah. when, back before people really had to like proper skate like backyard ramps they had it all dialed in you know right so what else did you film for props or like what else what other kind of stuff were you working on around that time um well let's see I, I did i started working for props as a contributor um got to go on a couple of the mega tours and the road fools and just work on some like pitch pieces on issues do you have any particular memories of like filming on mega tours or road fools because i feel like it would all kinds of insane shit must have happened that I, I wish I knew the details of. Yeah, yeah. Man, those trips were awesome. Um, I think I only went on one Road Fools. It was, uh, I think it was Road Fools 12, but it was... Okay, and that's a legendary yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Porter. Yeah, and, uh, Stephen yeah. Hamilton yep. and all those, that whole crew. But yeah, that was cool. Um, and that was like in Ohio, Pittsburgh area too, which I was really familiar with a lot of those scenes. I was actually living in Ohio at the time when we did that trip, so that was cool. I kind of got helped plan the trip a little bit. So um, yeah, like all those prop trips were super fun. And I felt like that was a really kind of like... Uh, important time for like bmx videos it was of, yeah just before you know kind of like vhs transitioning to dvd and then transitioning into like web stuff it was kind of like when dvds were at their prime you know yeah it's funny how the dvd era was really very brief in retrospect <laughs> like the it, the vhs era was kind of long the dvd era was pretty short in comparison yeah yeah, yeah. kids are gonna kill me if i don't ask you like all kinds of the questions about becoming a filmer and stuff like do you, do you remember having any uh like particular like struggles or like breakthroughs in that regard like was it was did it come naturally to you being a filmer to just um i mean the only way i learned was just from watching tons of videos right. you know you kind of analyze your favorite videos you kind of it, it's all it is kind of like not copying but slightly mimicking yeah like because if if you could copy somebody then right. maybe yeah, you could only really throw your own flair on it once you have learned to copy appropriately right right, yeah. right. so i think it's all about just getting the idea of like Framing the shot, comp you know, it, it, and I'm, I learned on like the crappiest camera ever. It's just more about learning like where to be in the composition first, you know, right. and then 
um, you know, his camera's got night. It's so easy and accessible for kids these days. There's a lot of like, uh, I think people skills involved too that probably goes understated is that there's there's been a lot of good filmers over the years that haven't really been able to cut it just because you really do kind of have to have a like a therapist role with the writer in a weird way or if, if they don't like you I mean it's so easy for a writer to not like right. a filmer because they're, it's such a personal thing that they're doing totally totally yeah, yeah. I mean it's all I'm just lucky because most of the guys I film with now I've been friends with right. for so long you know it doesn't even feel like we're working yeah so I definitely kind of fell into the role but yeah I mean it's all about just being able to be a guy, like a normal guy in the van with everybody else. You know, it's, you know, I, I never refer to myself as the boss or whatever, you know, my team manager role. But, yeah, being a filmer is just somebody that can blend seamlessly in with the crew and, you know, go to the spots and get the shot, you know. Did you, uh, did you go to college ever? I did. Yeah. I did. Do you got your full degree and everything? Yeah. Or? Yeah, I got a, um, like a undergrad. I got a bachelor's of uh, video production. Uh, right. Oh, sorry. Let me say that again. Uh, so, I, like, Bachelor of the Arts, okay. it's just a BA degree, but um, yeah, so I, I just went to school for four years for film production. It was a small, it wasn't like a full legit film school, it was kind of like a liberal arts school. They had like a smaller film department, and um, at the time I was kind of doing interning work for props, so I was like, I was really hustling hard on the side, not just like the work I was learning in, in college, but the one good thing college was for me was um, learning to shoot 16 millimeter film and mm -hmm. like really learning kind of like the fine arts background of film right more so than just like the camera techniques and everything do you think else. that that was valuable that you kind of got that more in depth because there's a lot of people in bmx that are good filmers but they only know how to do this one very specific thing they know how to set the camera up and they know how to film a fish line and right but the, but you I, I guess in in college you must have picked up all kinds of different yeah. levels of understanding yeah i think i'd like to think i picked up a few things that are valuable but i've never gotten a job based on having a college degree i've never right. never once been approached and someone came to me and said Do you have a degree you know so you know i guess it's always something to fall back on but i'm not sure if it's something that's ever at this point in my career it hasn't like gotten me anything that wouldn't yeah know, if, a, if, it. if you met like a young kid who wanted to become a, a filmmaker or whatever would you hesitate to recommend that he go to college it's changed so much, you know, since I was in school. Nowadays, I mean, there's all these... And nowadays, it seems even less necessary yeah, than it might have that, at the time, right? I would, almost, I would tell someone to learn as much as they can on their own. I mean, yeah. the internet is just such a powerful tool. You guys yeah. know, obviously. But anything you want to learn how to do, there's a YouTube tutorial. Exactly, you know? yeah. So it's like, I mean, if it's a film school that has, like, the most insane job placement in the field you want to work in, then maybe it's, maybe it's worth it. But for me, I'd almost say learn the ropes yourself first and then see if you can... You know, see what happens, and and then again, it's it really all is all about the connections. Once you yeah. have the skills, once you have the connections, yeah, they, to like they, it's kind of a cliche. They always say that like college teaches you how to learn versus because you know, like to me, the mentality of like, oh, I'm going to sit down and watch a YouTube video, and then five ten minutes later, I'm going to know how to do this thing in Final Cut is like very easy. But I'm also an adult, and I think of it a certain way. You know, when you're a young kid, like a lot of like teenagers and stuff, they're not as intuitive, and they don't think of things as simply as that. So. I don't know. I mean, I, I think that there is like a certain value to college, but then a full college, you know, where you're going to spend like a hundred grand or more yeah, on yeah. it. I mean, that is the part that's kind of hard right, to stomach, right. you know? Yeah. It's like finish college, have all this debt and then struggle to get work to pay off the debt. You know, it's like right. I see the, the, you know, the pros and cons, but I think it just really depends on the person, how they learn and like what type of videos they want to make. If they want to be a BMX video guy, I don't think you need college, Yeah, you know, because you're going to. If you're going to make it, you're going to have to know the people that work for the companies and, you know, get your foot in the right door. Right. You don't really need a film degree to get that, you know. True. So you're doing all this props stuff and everything like that. Um, am I totally skipping ahead to just mention the you and Chad Shackleford teaming up or was there other projects that took place? Well, there's the system video. Mm. I should definitely mention that. Yeah, yeah. But that was with Chad as well, kind of. No, right? no, no. No, he didn't, he didn't help uh, with that on the production side. He just had a split part. Yeah, in it. yeah. That was um, the year that I graduated film school and moved to Ohio. That was like my first big project straight out of film school. And I was... Um, I got really lucky with that project. I felt like everything just fell into place as far as like the riders, the crew. That was like, I think that was uh, 2004 when we produced that. So that was like kind of a, again, kind of like a transitional time for BMX just before the web stuff came out. But uh, yeah, I kind of, it was a... Uh, How'd you get picked for that? Like what, what is a... Uh... Well, at the time, um, straight out of college, I, I started working for uh, Corey Meath and Steve Budendeck's ad agency called Axis, um, right. which they don't no longer do. But uh, so basically, I just got a job to move to Dayton, Ohio, straight out of college, working for those guys. And um, they worked very closely with DK back then. Mm -hmm. They did like all the team stuff, um, all the art stuff for system cycles. Right. And back then, it was mainly DK and Fly. So you know, we had this idea like, why not do a video with all the best dudes on both teams? Right. And um, we pitched it to them, and they were down. So once we got the green light, we had 
uh, just under a year to film and about I had about two months to edit. Really? So yeah. uh, you guys go on a lot of trips for that and everything? Yeah, yeah. We did quite a few trips. Um, came out of Cali a bunch. So I was based in Ohio and DK was based in Ohio, but we did we did quite a bit of traveling for that that project within that right. you know, 10 months. Hold yeah. on. I'm just taking a look at this uh, list of questions that uh, some of my group chat friends have, have volunteered. Oh, okay. The System Cycle video story about Ian Schwartz getting arrested. That was that a uh, the crazy one when he's leaving the the video or he's leaving the police station with his shoelaces missing. Yeah, yeah, that was um. Was that one of the more stressful moments of the of the filming? Yeah, thinking back, that was um. We were on a trip just driving around like Ohio. Uh, we drove from like Ohio to Chicago, um, and then back up to like Detroit around Michigan. And um, yeah, we were just it was like the beginning of filming one day, and we were just like, oh, let's go check out this park. I think we were in Lansing, Michigan at the time. And um, it was, you know, just like we do all the time. It was a park and just side of sign said no bikes, you know. Right. And um, we were there for maybe five minutes. I don't even think everybody had made it from the van to the skate park. And um, instantly it was like a cop swarm in the parking lot. And everybody ran different directions. And I think the cop just picked Ian, you uh-huh. know, and just chased after him and grabbed him. And, uh, yeah, I think we had, for some reason, they, you know, they, they processed him, locked him up for a little bit, took his shoelaces out. And then... <laughs> and then um, you know, and then we eventually got the call that we could come pick him up later that day. So we went out and had, you know, without Ian that day while he was locked up. For so it wasn't as serious as it looks? No, no. It was, you know, I think, you know, the video might have made it look like it was a big deal, but it was literally just him pedaling around a skate park. It wasn't anything crazy, you know. Were you totally in on the fact that you were filming some of the most progressive riding and specifically free coaster riding at the time with Ian? I mean... When I saw the footage, I was pretty blown away, and I was—I remember wondering to myself. Oh, so you didn't film all of it? Like there was a lot of submitted footage. A lot of Ian's footage was um like his like local filmer in Columbus. I think uh, he he sent me a DV tape one one time that had probably maybe half of his footage on it, and uh-huh. the other half of stuff we kind of filmed on trips. So yeah, some of that really crazy free coaster stuff I didn't even film. It was just like him and his his guys you know you remember uh when was it your decision to use the tracy chapman song uh for the chat shack ian connor or ian connor ian uh short split that was actually ian's pick for the song he really was like, he's like this would be a really sick song and i listened to it a few times and i was like yeah it's perfect see that was the good old days when none of those songs were used up yeah. nowadays most of the really good songs are like oh shit that was in a fucking that was in a props or something yeah 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 exactly that's hilarious so um uh, around that time, were you filming? Did you ever help film for Shook early on as well? Um, or were you involved in that? Because that was kind of like the whole Midwest movement yeah, at the time too. Not so much because Chad was doing Shook or Shine, and then Shook before I moved to Ohio. And okay. then by the time I moved to Ohio, I'd already been working for Props for a while. Right. So they were at the time it was kind of like you know two separate companies right. or whatever. So I was always friends. I met Chad, you know, early two thousands, and then um, you know, and then. He was killing it on the filming game and in the writing game. Yeah, at the time, in the system video, that was probably his best footage. Yeah, It was really fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I think he sent, like, again, he had all that footage. That was, like, supposed to go towards some other, like, Shook or some other project he was working on. And then when we said, we want to do a split part with you and Ian, he was like, okay, I got a bunch of footage. Right. And he gave me most of that. I may have filmed a handful of clips with him, but most of that was his stuff he already had. Was that the second uh, Chris Doyle section that you ever filmed after the Damn Kids one, or was there anything in between that I'm missing out on? Actually, there was one in between that I forgot to mention. Um, the very first video, I guess full-length video, I technically did was Stock, and that was with Corey Muth. It was just on VHS, uh-huh. just a North Carolina scene video. And, okay, um, so I, never, I don't think I ever saw that. Yeah, it's... it's um. Yeah, it's obviously long gone out of print. I think it might be on my Vimeo page, but yeah, we never did any DVD runs or anything. But yeah, Doyle had the last part in that, and that was kind of like the first big project that I kind of took and filmed most of it, and then Corey Meath and I edited that together. Right. Yeah, and I was still in high school then. I was like my, maybe a senior in high school when we did that one. Right. Was it was it cool reconnecting with Doyle to film that the section in the uh, system video, or was that yeah? Was it was it a natural like you guys never stopped filming yeah, together yeah. in a way? Yeah, yeah. We were, we were like best friends for so long. So at that point, it was just like it was just like let's go have fun and make another great part. You know, try to. Was it an Oasis song? It was, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Who, do you remember whose decision that was? That was also Doyle's. Doyle's <laughs> yeah? Decision, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you had a good, good, good call there. What about uh, Brian Kaczynski? You had like another that was one of the more notable sections in that video. Uh, did you have a filming relationship with him? Yeah, I'd met Kaczynski a few years before that at Woodward, and um, he was. I remember he was writing for Standard at the time, and um, right, he didn't even get on DK until like halfway through filming the system video. So he was kind of late start to the project. When true BK style, yeah, he yeah. he overproduced. Yeah, I, I, I want to say he showed up because. 
midway through the, the system video, we did a, our big Germany uh, France trip, and, and BK just showed up at the Worlds with his his first DK. So the first his first trip was on. Um, he didn't even go on that trip. We had a big trip planned out months ahead, and he was wasn't even on the team until after. So um, he he came along late in the game for that filming project, but he had his own like TRB 900 set up, and he was out filming every day, you know. And right. um, he just sent me a bunch of crazy footage, and then he got to go on a handful of trips with me here and there. Yeah, he really came through for that. Do you re- recall like the, the the reception to that video being particularly positive? Because I remember that it was like almost like an instant classic amongst like my friends and I. Like we just loved it so much. Yeah, I, I, I it's strange because like people that was, still talk about it so much. Yeah, you know that's the video. I will say that's the video that I made that I'm even probably to this day maybe the most proud of. As like a cohesive full yeah, product. Yeah. I feel like I was straight out of film school and I was just like really excited to make a good video and it was like. Maybe it was just the time and the, the people that were in it was just all everything just clicked, you know. Right. Um, but uh, and you didn't have to clear music. Yeah, so no music <laughs> that goes no, a long no, way. You no know, music clearance was a huge plus. Yeah. You know, and getting to shoot at some sixteen millimeter, that was a lot of fun. And yeah, it's the first time I'd been like proper overseas trip. But the funny thing was, is I remember making the system video, being really psyched on it, and then we had this big premiere set up. And then I think at the time, I was working for props, and they they were like, "Do you want to?" Do you want to go film Backyard Jam? And I was like, sure. And they were, I was like, when it is? And there was like on my premiere date. And I was like, shit. So I ended up passing up the premiere for the system video to go to the UK to film like the first time I'd filmed the Backyard Jam. Was anybody mad at you for making that decision? Um, I, at the time, I don't really think so. Okay. But looking back, I kind of wish I would have stuck around because like, you know, I saw all these cool photos, of everybody hanging out with like Winkleman in a wheelchair at the premiere and stuff. And right. I, I missed out on that. So that kind of sucked. But you know, what, what, what's your work ethic like? Are you a workaholic? Like, have, has it always kind of been second nature to you? To, you seem like a pretty hardworking guy. Yeah, I mean, I go through phases depending on what projects I'm working on and um, just like what I'm exactly what I'm doing. Because I do more than just BMX videos. I do like as an outside freelance work too. So I'm kind of constantly juggling multiple projects all the time. Right. But um, but yeah, I mean, I, I try to work hard and put everything I can at every project. I get the opportunity for. Have you always done stuff outside of uh, BMX? Even since early on, were you always like interested in pursuing that sort of stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, definitely my passion is filming BMX, but I obviously do that stuff just to kind of make up some side work, you know? Right. Yeah. Oh, one that I forgot though is: uh, Did you ever feel tempted to intervene and tell Biz Jordan to stop landing with his foot on the top tube uh, in his system part? <laughs> Back then, that was... It didn't matter. Yeah, back then... I recall, Back then, you didn't put your foot down. (laughs) Right. It it counts, you know? Catfish, of all people, loves to give Biz shit for that, which is kind of ironic, because Catfish is like the worst rider ever. I do remember some people hating on Biz back then, but Biz was like, yeah, whatever, that's how I do toe whips. I remember Max Gertig having the cover of of Dig doing like a feeble to to hard whip, and he landed like the craziest, you know, foot on the the seat or whatever, but it it didn't matter at the time. Yeah. Because tail whips were so shocking. They were so impossible at the time that nobody was really hating on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Did you film a lot with, with Biz for the system? video though i gotta ask yeah yeah i think um biz maybe filmed a handful of clips when he went back to boston with uh with cookie his right. friend cookie yeah um but other than that i'm pretty sure i was filming most of Biz's stuff what do you think of him he's a weird guy huh i mean he's one of my favorite people <laughs> in the world I, yeah. he, all you guys know exactly why but it's yeah, really yeah. hard to explain biz to the outside world yeah he's on another planet yeah i mean just the stuff that comes out of his mouth i can't even really can't yeah. even really transcribe it to the rest of the people but lots of stuff that we wouldn't be able to uh say publicly yeah so somehow in the course of the system video you started to you decided to form a little uh a pack with uh with with chad shack is that true or did that come way after no it was actually um i think it was a couple years later actually okay. yeah i think it was a couple years later um so when would that have been that would have been did you join together for a specific project yeah, well, yeah, pretty much for Odyssey, because okay. around the time... Um, and you remember what year it was? I think 2006 is when we decided to partner okay. up, because I was, um, he was producing Shook videos. I had moved back, I had um, left Ohio, moved back to North Carolina, and I was, um, I was working on like a handful of projects. I was working on like a Hoffman broke off video. Chad oh, was working. The, you didn't edit that though, did you? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. did. Wow, I mm-hmm. forgot about that one. Yeah. That was cool. That was a uh, legendary Seth Kimbrough section. Yeah, and that that project was kind of doomed from like the very first trip. Really, everybody got hurt. Like yeah, every trip, somebody really got hurt. And, and that was the whole theme of the video yeah, broke yeah, off. It was, and it, it was, was it was so clear that that was what the video should have been called. Because right. I don't think one trip went by without somebody going to the hospital. Really, like yeah. massive injuries. Yeah. Brad Sims too was in there. Yeah, yeah. Baz Keep. There was yep. a, few, a few good ones in there. Yep. I used to watch that on the DVD copy all the time. Mm-hmm. But so um. Yeah, like how'd you decide to... So you were working on that. Right, so I was working on that. Chad was um, working on Shook, and he was still in Ohio. 
And that was right around the time Chad was like doing like really crazy motion graphics and some of those old Shook videos. And yeah, I was, he was I like very progressive with yeah, that. Yeah, and I reached out and I was like, man, you're doing great stuff. We should team up on some stuff. And he's like, yeah, that's great. You know, we, we enjoy working together. He's a good dude. Um, and he, at the time, Odyssey was distroing Shook. He had uh-huh. a deal worked out where they were um, producing his quarterly series right. videos. And then they were like, we want to do a full length. So at the time, that's when they um, decided they wanted to do what became Electronical. Right. So then, Chad, I think they reached out to Chad, and then Chad's like, is this something you would want to collab on? And I was like, sure, let's do it. Yeah, so that's kind of like our first project we took on together, I'm pretty sure, was the Electronical video. And so was the plan for you guys to work together on all of your upcoming video projects at that time, or was it just sort of like, we're going to do this project together, and that'll be it? Yeah, I think, I think we were like, you know, at the time... Um, I was work. He was working a lot with Dave Jacobs. Like right, they were working kind of side by side on like my creation. You know, Dave's clothing brand, and then um, you know Dave was helping chat a lot with like motion graphics and stuff. So we kind of started. We kind of like decided to try to do like I guess a three way business partnership. Uh-huh. And I just kind of brought them all in. I had already formed an LLC for nine to five. So I was nine like, to right. five films was yeah. the name, right? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, I just kind of I brought those guys into to nine to five and um, Dave was kind of the web guy. Chad was video and motion and I was, you know, video guy. So we were trying to, trying to see what, it, what would happen. It was never anything official, like real like employees or anything. It was just kind of like three friends coming together, trying to right. do projects together. And you filmed a bunch of fucking really strange sections for electronical in a sense, like especially that, that weird Taj section where he's just riding in this abandoned building. How long did that take? Like a week or? Yeah. Yeah. That was really interesting. So Taj, um, through all the music and stuff he plays, he knew a bunch of guys in bands. He knew this guy and uh, this guy Ron, and um, he was in one of the bands that Taj toured with. And he lived in the middle of nowhere, Kansas. And um, he had been telling Taj that he bought he bought two middle schools in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, for like five grand on eBay. Uh-huh. And Taj was like, "That's one of the weirdest things I've ever heard. That's really interesting. I want five to, grand for yeah, two middle schools. Something crazy like that." Um, and but when I say middle of nowhere, I mean like a hundred miles from the closest city. Like there was no, right. nothing around. So we decided to just try to make something out of it, and we went out there. Um, I don't think we did a – yeah, we didn't do any location scouting. We just trusted Taj, and we just went out there and um, went to Home Depot or, like, the little hardware store in the town, and Taj just started building ramps. Did this occur to you at the time that it was an incredibly strange idea? that Because it's like, what, what was there supposed to be in the school to ride? Like, it just seems like there would – like the average school probably would have almost nothing to ride unless you started ripping things apart. Or. Yeah, yeah. In the beginning of that section, Tosh talks about like his dream when he's a kid is always to like ride through his high school and like oh, okay, jump yeah. on the desk and all that stuff. So it was um it was kind of like you know him going back to being in school and wanting to kind of just live out a childhood dream. So we were like, okay, let's do that and try to build some ramps and some stuff for you to get rad on. So pretty much the only like the gymnasium in the high school we built. Um, like a big hip and I remember you built the berm so that you could hit that one thing right yep, yeah yep and it's funny too because like I'm not really good at building ramps I think at the time Bauer was helping Taj a little bit but it's like Taj would literally build something really big we'd get one shot and then he'd tear it all down and we would you know film him set up the next shot so it was it was definitely a process and we, I took I think it took the entire five days of just building ramps tearing down all day every day and filming to get that part done right yeah, so would you describe that whole process with Taj uh, filming in the school, would you describe it as like a smooth process or was it difficult once you actually got there? Was there more or less than he thought there was going to be a ride? I think it was a struggle for all of us. Um, y- yeah, it was, th- these schools were like abandoned for like 20 years, so they were just like shit everywhere in the way. And it was just <laughs> a lot of like moving stuff around so we could set up the shot. Um, you lean in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Sorry. But um, but no, I was. Uh, it was it was way different than any other project or video part I tried to film at the time but uh I enjoyed it and Taj was like my favorite writer from childhood so right, I was like, yeah. if he wanted to do something I was going to try to make it happen so were you could. kind of geeking out a little oh, bit the yeah, whole time totally yeah totally I was really geeking out were there any other st- uh standout sections in there I mean you could talk about Aiken you could talk about Chase Hawk Aaron Ross there was a lot of fucking epic names that uh had sections in there yeah um man I Jim C yeah yeah, I mean, those guys, at the t- you know, for the time, those guys were definitely the yeah. dudes. I mean, I, I had fun on every trip I went on. With right. that. And that was like, that was uh, right when I learned how to, that was when I got my first HD camera. So I was really kind of learning oh, yeah. the whole HD transition at that point, too. So, so. Was, that, was that a tough transition or was it, was it fun? Yeah, it was, it was tough. I watched the video and I just cringed at some shots because I just really, I had, my settings were off and I just uh, didn't, didn't know exactly. It was just a whole learning curve year, you know. Right. Interesting. Um, so at some point in that, you and Chad also took on this Levi's project, right? Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really interesting because that was one of the, f- well, number one, that was one of the last times that we saw 
a, an outside company really just dump a bunch of money into BMX and put together a whole team and stuff. And only lasted a few years. But also it was really notable, even though it was through Vital, was that it was like just a really well done, I think, like overall like campaign where it was like inescapable for a period of time and you guys were just putting out so much web content as well as doing the DVD. And that was a very like new thing at the time. So can you talk about like how you were approached to, to do that project? Yeah, um, totally. I, again, I think it was kind of right place at the right time for me. Um, I had worked with Hoffman Bikes quite a bit and, you know, CFB Series. And um, at the time, Target had become a co-sponsor of the CFB Series. They were, you know. And Hargit, and yeah, uh, Hoffman. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they were, they were sponsoring the contest and the Hoffman team. And a lady named Kathy McGrath, who right, worked yeah. for Target at the time, she I had worked with her and helped her with some projects. Is she still in BMX, side note? Um, no, she she does all kinds of other stuff. Yeah. Not, not really so much in BMX. She's still, okay. like, still like working on... Because wasn't she doing uh, ad sales for Dig at one point? Yes. Yeah, because yeah. she lives in Glasgow. She okay. lives over there. I heard she married uh, the tour manager for a band that's based, based in Glasgow. So she's over there half the time and over here half the time. Shout out to the, like, the eight people that know who we're talking about. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Shout out to Kathy McGrath. Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, so she put together, um, she consulted with, uh, I think, myself and Steve Buddendeck about trying to build a, a team and trying to do this, you know, trying to put out videos. Right. And yeah, the, it, it was strange because at the time, it, had, it was before the, like, there was like a routine web video schedule for right. something that on that level. And um, yeah, she just asked me if I wanted to try to do it and... I uh, really had no idea what I was doing. I was de- definitely in over my head, but uh, I it, it worked out. It yeah, worked out good. Would you? Uh, so from early on, though, uh, were you involved in picking the team at all? Did you have any say in that? I just it was just kind of like more of a kind of like put some names in the hat type thing. But I didn't actually make the decisions. But I right. remember I remember at the time. I'm pretty sure I suggested Martinez and Bestwick. So it was right. cool to see those guys because they were looking kind of like round out the team. And so, but was their plan all along, like we're going to do this really immersive like web stuff along the way and everything? Because I I remember Kathy talking to me about like them even then having like analytics to show them like the mentions of Levi's on different websites and stuff. Like she had this crazy insider knowledge that at the time, like now you could have a Google alert for that and it wouldn't be that big a deal. But at the time it seemed really impressive to me. Yeah, yeah. She definitely, um, she, I guess, you know, she saw how like popular like web stuff, I guess that was, that might have been right around the time Vita was launching. Yeah, yeah, it was within just, like the first year or so. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so I think um, she, I think she knew those guys and they they were into it. And yeah, just we just started filming. I, I don't remember, I don't remember how many trips we did before we started. But it was a ton. Right? I, I think I had like maybe maybe six months of filming before the first video came out. So I had, but at the time I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna. I did it all myself, and it was kind of like a lot, a lot of work to take on at uh-huh. once, like the filming and editing for forty web videos in a year. Right. Yeah. Did yeah. you did you bring in uh, Chad? Sh- was Chad Shack in on this, or was this all you? Um, Chad didn't work on Levi stuff with okay. me. Okay. No. Never at any point. Mm, I don't think he did. No, because okay. he ended up moving back to Ohio that year. And he ended up doing the Sunday video, or like yeah. Or, or was were you ever involved with that, or no? No, I think I just had help, like help film some clips. But I was working. I don't even remember because that was after Electronical, and maybe while I was working on Levi's, or maybe there was something else going on where I just I was busy, and I, right. I maybe had helped contribute some clips, but I wasn't. Did Levi's win a Nor Cup? No. Not even for any of the sections. Mm-mm. Oh, because it wouldn't have been because there were mixed sections anyway. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um. But so. Was there like a breakup between you and Chad? Like, how would you describe that? Because at a certain point, he kind of left the BMX industry, possibly on bad terms with certain people. Yeah. Uh, did you guys have like a falling out? Yeah. Th- no, there was no real falling out. It was just kind of like, you know, we had different, you know, kind of different opinions on things. Yeah. And I was like going through a lot of changes on my end. I was about to have my my son. He right. was about to be a dad for the first time, and I was like, we were just kind of in two different places in life. And um, I think I just told him I'm gonna try to do this solo and. And he understood. You know. Kind of a weird concept, too, like grown men filmers like teaming up like that. I feel like it would be so rare for the, the chemistry to actually hit off because it's such a – like filming is such like a – well, I mean, I, I, BMX filming is such like a personal pursuit. You're this like lone wolf going out there. Like to, to be teamed up with somebody it just seems like it would be hard to make it work. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, we, we work good together. Um, but, you know, at some point, sometimes you just have a different vision than other people you're working on projects with. And um, – yeah, you know, Chad, everything's still cool. We we actually hung out not that long ago. He came down to North Carolina. Um, well, I guess it's been like a year now, but he stayed with me, and it was cool. Like we, I hadn't seen him in a few years, but we, you know, caught up on a lot of stuff, and he's doing really well. Nice. He's doing really well. How'd you end up feeling about the Levi's video all in all? I had like one of the most insane epic sections ever with the Corey Nathan uh, Dakota section. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, for for having. I think again, that was that video was like maybe eight or nine months of filming right. to do that. So. 
it's weird back then you could get a video done in under a year but nowadays it's like well especially with modern day street writing it's right, like it's crazy you, got, you can't do a video in a year unless you're you got a small team or or whatever the situation is but um and that was a big team it was 12 dudes yeah it was a lot of guys and um, a lot of traveling get different styles but um yeah i mean i'm, I'm proud looking back on it for right. for what it was and at that point in my filmmaking career i feel like i did okay for my skills at that level or right. where i was at that that point you know nice. what what uh what comes to mind when you think about stuff that you did post levi's post levi's so that's kind of when i joined um like joined the greenhouse guys right and did, what was your first official title there um i think it was it was actually enter bike of 2009 um and i again i'd been like great friends with Corey and steve from greenhouse mm-hmm. um for over 10 years and um you know I, I think at the time they were just getting their brands up and going and i asked you know i just said what if you need, a, you need like a video guy for all your brands right. and a tm for all your brands and they eventually said, thought of you know we're into it so um i think interbike 2009 is when i officially joined and you've been just doing work for them ever since mm-hmm. nice what uh what's like the most the most interesting project that you've worked under in the green holes the greenhouse uh, category one, because I'll just say one that comes to mind is Dave Thompson. Yeah, yeah. That was, was that a, a roller coaster? Yeah, yeah. Dave, Dave's a he's he's an interesting character. Yeah, he wasn't around that that long in the pro spotlight so much, but then once he yeah, yeah but he put out a couple of insane yeah. sections. That, yeah, you know, he's just one of those guys. He's amazing, amazing bike rider. You know, he's definitely an interesting person, but I think he's just not cut out for the to be a pro bike rider you know he's right. just, he just gets to his head and he just kind of wants he doesn't like the attention you know right. i guess there's certain guys that just want to do it for themselves but yeah that he had just undeniable bike skills and bike control i, I mean <laughs> anybody I, I just think that gap to feeble and killjoy are, oh my god you know, that's, yeah. that's i don't think anyone's done a gap trail that big no, I, I, never mind an accidental feeble yeah yet. yeah exactly so dave is um super talented you know but he he decided, um, you know, he wasn't in the trying to be a per bike rider anymore, and he started his concrete business. And now he's got, you know, he's got a girlfriend, he's got a daughter, um, or son or a daughter. I can't, I can't remember. Sorry, Dave. But uh, yeah, he's a, he's got a, he's a father now, and um, he's just living out in somewhere in Idaho. Oh, Idaho. Huh? Yeah, That's yeah. So got a concrete business. So I spent a few months since I spoke to him, but he's doing well. Nice. But, yeah, he's he's a crazy character for sure are there any other like highlights in terms of your web videos and stuff that you've worked on under the the verde umbrella or the greenhouse umbrella yeah i mean just getting to do these cinema projects has really Uh, been awesome and getting to help build that team has been awesome you know that has been a wild uh you've done so many like collaborative trips and just different trips over the years that have been really iconic oh thanks Yeah, yeah i mean like again just i think just having those the team the cinema team and you know we're trying to do more with these guys it's just hard everyone's so busy right um but uh yeah they they really are like some of the most progressive dudes in bmx so i yeah. just feel lucky to get to point a camera at them right you know? what's it like filming with Corey and nathan is that's uh pretty unbelievable you've been doing it for a long time yeah yeah i mean to me they're just normal humble guys that right. like riding bikes and happen to pull everything really easy yeah yeah just the the tech factor with those guys <laughs> is insane but um it really sucks they're both hurt now you, you obviously saw that Corey got hurt yesterday nathan, no oh what did he oh Corey, he broke his collarbone right Corey yeah. broke his collarbone nathan fell and um hit his head and he split his head open and got knocked out today really and like bad bad or i don't know i just saw it like 30 minutes before i walked in here so i didn't oh, get a geez. chance to call him yet but oh, yeah. should have hoped nathan's all right yeah they're trying to wrap up uh filming united video so right you guys are going in how has uh your own riding like progressed over the years we didn't really even talk that much about your own personal riding but a lot of people know that you're actually really good on a bike well i'm just honestly i'm like the clumsiest dude ever on a bike i, <laughs> I like eat shit on feeble grind so i'm like i've kind of stepped away from even trying to ride so much on trips and um because i mean i i always get hurt doing the dumbest shit i i think I, like i was a few years ago i was on a bare day trip in, in england and i was just trying to jump a stupid set of doubles and just you know broke my elbow like for no no reason so it seems like i'm kind of plagued with injuries and that's kind of a big reason i didn't try to well didn't try to pers- growing up a guy like doyle i just wanted to be a pro bike rider like him you right know? and then but yeah I, when did when did that dream start to fade away i think it started to fade away when i i think it was my freshman year of college i think i broke my leg both wrists and separated my shoulder all within like a year so, so you feel like you were the kind of rider that was like kind of prone to injury yeah and yeah i was really felt that way as well yeah, yeah, yeah like very, i didn't have to do anything that hard to get hurt yeah so i was very injury prone so i was always at the trails on the sidelines and i just i wanted to hang out with my friends riding so i just think i picked up a camera so i could start filming when's the last time you did a backflip 
Oh man, it's been a minute. It's been <laughs> it's been a few years. If a phone pick counts, it might have been like a year or two. But before that, it was it's been maybe five six years. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> never. No, I thought I've thought about doing it into the phone, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Never. Even that seems kind of overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about uh, yeah? So I mean, it's kind of a, a strange topic to discuss, but uh, you, there was a, there was a whole divorce trend in BMX a few years ago. Uh, was this, was this a whole hard thing to go through, and uh, how did this affect you? Yeah, man, that was um, not to get too personal, but that was a really yeah. hard time. You know, that was that was like rock bottom for me, the divorce stuff, and um, and it, it was crazy too that you know that was like that was what two summers ago, right? And yeah. Like five of my best friends all happened at the same time. Yeah. It's very similar situations. Very strange. It was like you, Corey, Nathan, Seth. Yeah. Um, and then there's a handful there was of others. There was another one. There was other people that like, yeah. you know, that we might not even know as well. But yeah, it, was, yeah. it was a weird rash of, that was going on at the yeah. time. Yeah. 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 So yeah, man, it was, that was, um, that was pretty big for me too. But yeah, you know, I just, um, that's definitely the hardest thing I've ever dealt with in my personal life. But really? Got through it and it's all good now. You did know? you, uh, do you have to change locations or anything? Did you, uh, did you switch up your life in like various ways because of that or? Yeah, I mean, no more than the normal. We like sold our house and moved out of it and I got right. my own place and she got her own place and that's, yeah, it was, it was like, there was a lot of dirt in between, but we pretty much, we, uh, you know, we have two kids together. So we, yeah, yeah. We kind of like, it was as clean as it could be to be a dirty breakup. Is that rough dealing with the, the kids' situation? I assume that's probably the most complicated part. Yeah, yeah. I think I was lucky that they were just young enough to not really understand what was going on during, right. during that stuff. So now they're starting to ask more questions. They're a little bit older. They're like kindergarten, first grade, but they're they're happy. Right. I think as happy as they can be for the transition. So yeah. What um do you do you get the same satisfaction out of doing like web videos and stuff as you did back when there was the DVD era? Um, not that the DVD era is completely over, but I mean, most of the stuff you've worked on for, and, and you're always kind of in this war in terms of doing a, a DVD or not in terms of the cinema project right. that you've been kind of working on forever, right? Right, right. right. Yeah. I, I mean, I try to, everything I do now, I try to just pretend like I just do the best with whatever I have. <laughs> I, I try not to think about if it's for web or for DVD. Obviously what I'm working on now mostly is going to DVD, mm -hmm. but um, everything I work on, I try to just do the best I can with it whether it's just going straight to web or not right so but was uh do you miss that whole feeling of like putting it all together because it's been a long time since you did a dvd but you but you're still kind of chasing after like, yeah. the cinema thing right? yeah yeah definitely we're still I mean like cinema's tough because we've got the guys on the team are arguably some of the most busy guys yeah in the industry pulled in a million different directions yeah so we were you know we were gonna have dakota up next for the next cinema part and then you know the van's video deadline got pushed forward so we're gonna just you know the cinema i never wanted the guys to ever feel any pressure because right. they've got big sponsors that really do have really ex big expectations rightfully so so um cinema is just always i kind of just let those guys have fun with it and keep it on the back burner but eventually we will have parts from the rest of the team okay but, but so it, the idea is to put out the sections one by one yeah, and then that's the dvd exactly okay yeah and we'll do have like an intro and credits at that point but and who who else is on the team at this point that we should uh look out for sections from so we we just dropped chad's part and then right. we got dakota Corey, nathan and uh garrett yeah, what about Garrett? You just kind of pause for a second. Garrett's on pause. He's he's just all over the place. Like I was trying to link up with him on this trip, but he's in Florida doing fiend stuff. So he's just like he's a busy guy. I'm a busy guy, and it's just like our schedules aren't really. Do you have footage together. of him though? Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of a lot of good stuff. And is this a weird thing because you have like amazing you know footage from all these different guys, and then it starts to get older, and is this a stressful thing? Yeah, yeah. That's, even Chad, there's a hub switch in, right. the, in that section, which yeah. is you know kind of makes the footage feel a little bit more dated. Yeah, and all I think all the cinema parts will have lots of cassette footage in it. Yeah, yeah. So, so it'll, it'll kind of be the stuff that's been in the archive for a while, and then the kind of newer stuff kind of blended together. Has it been weird for you to watch all the changes in BMX over the years? Like, it's uh, you grew up as a trails guy, and the trails are clearly not not in the forefront the way they used to be. Uh, do you still love like the modern style of BMX that you end up filming the most? I do, I do. I mean, I I mainly do film street riding now, but I still appreciate all types of bike riding. Mm -hmm. You know, it might not be the stuff I film or maybe even really watch that much, but I still got respect for all forms of BMX. Yeah. Could you ever see yourself not filming BMX anymore? Like, does it ever occur to you that you might step? past it and move on you know i've been thinking about it maybe more now than lately just because like you know 
as much as it sucks to say, like you start looking at your age, I'm like, wow, I'm 35. Right. Am I going to be 55 still filming with like 17 year old kids? You know. Right. Yeh. Um, 40 is a weird, a weird point. Like, am yeah. I still going to be out riding all the time at 40? Right. You always think about that number for some reason. Right. But I guess I thought about 30 a lot when I was yeah. 20 too. Yeah. So. But I mean, I still, I'm still happy pedaling around with that heavy ass camera bag on my back. So I just kind of, I'm trying not to think about it like that. You know. Yeah. Just kind of go with it. And then I, I do look in, you know, some of the older guys. Like I, I joke with. God, I live at like Mark Losey, Lee Ramsdale, they both live close to me and I joke with them. Like they're both ten years older than me still doing it. Right. So I think about it like that. Like, okay, I still, might still have some years left. But they're not filmers, so it's a little bit of a different role. You know, they can get by chilling at a desk That's or whatever. True. Yeah. I guess Mark still shoots photos. Lee's more, you know, desk guy, but yeah, still. Um yeah, yeah. I mean there's there's filmers that are older than me, but yeah, I guess I am kinda getting getting to be one of the old guys now when I think about it. Well, I'm not, I'm not trying to like grind that point into your consciousness or anything, <laughs> but yeah. Do you um over the years has there been any like any big like was it hard for you to learn how to skate and film was that a big change and stuff like that yeah yeah, i'm i'm horrible at skating um i push mongo i've got made fun of a lot so lately what i've done is i've just i just start skating switch and that just hides the mongo you know just right foot forward or uh, right foot push your left foot so i have gross skateboarding style but i don't really give a shit how i look on a skateboard i just want to get the shot yeah so i get made fun of pretty constantly on trips but uh I really don't care anymore. Do you think it's like, well, it's kind of crazy how filming has gotten real competitive in a certain way too, where it's like, it didn't used to be that big a deal that you could be like a really great, like uh, fish line filmer. And now that's like a required thing that if you're going to be a really dope filmer, uh, you kind of have to be able to do that. Is, is it, are you, do you consider yourself sort of competitive where you're looking at the other people's projects and you want to have a similar level of production or? I mean, yeah, you, you kind of always compare your work to other videos you see and mm-hmm. kind of like analyze how other filmers do things. I mean, I'm always psyched when I see good videos and good filming. I think like every, I want to see BMX look cool regardless of who films it, you know? Right. So I don't ever see something and get jealous of his shot versus my shot. Not like that, but I'm always, I, I am analyzing all the time. And maybe guilty as a filmer, not paying attention to the tricks as much as I am so the camera moves and stuff. Right. You know? Do you, uh, do you feel pressure to like jump on like certain trends when they come out like a lot of people have been using the drones and stuff like that is that something that interests you i mean i'm always interested by all that stuff but i'm always the last guy to like update my cameras okay. and technology i'm you know i'm still using p2 camera and you know 5d mark 3 dslr so i don't really have anything too fancy in my camera bag right you're not the guy who has to go out and get something when it comes out no i mean i, I try to keep up with you know what's coming out but i'm just the guy who i my style of filming, I keep it pretty basic. You uh-huh. know? I don't really need, I don't really need the drone on the day to day. If I need one, I'd rent it or something. You know, so no, for me, I keep it, I keep it pretty basic. Nice. I like being able to fit everything into like two small camera bags. You know, that's cool. Um, let me see what else you got here. Oh, um, I'm supposed to ask you about your uh, your alter ego, Neil. Oh, God, what can you tell me about Neil? Well, Neil is uh, my drunken alter ego and. <laughs> Um, yeah, he gets into situations that I wouldn't, that Will wouldn't get into. So, uh, I don't really know what else to say. Do you drink much these days or? Uh, I keep it pretty mellow compared to my college days. Yeah. Was that when Neil would be in, were you, was your alter ego called Neil even when you were in college? That's when Neil was born right around those, (laughs) those days. And then, yeah, he gets himself into trouble. And surprisingly, I was telling somebody the other day, knock on wood, Neil has never been beat up or arrested is a pretty pretty crazy story so that's kind of impressive yeah huh? considering his track record but yeah yeah man um lately it's been a lot more tame but used to rage a little harder who would you call your all-time favorite writer to film oh man that's such a hard one i feel like it's like it's it's you know i'm obviously biased being a tm and filmer for the brands i work for but i mean i i I, I, there's so many guys, it's hard to narrow it down to one. I mean, guys that are just as motivated as me are guys that I'm into filming. I mean, the list goes on, but just right outside my head, guys like Dak, Nyer, you know, Corey Nathan, Garrett, Biz. Have you actually filmed a full section of Nyer yet? Um, oh, I'm trying to think. Well, not DVD. Right. Not, not DVD. No, but part. a web video? Um, well, we've done... Let's see. We did the welcome edit, and we've done a couple edits here and there. And but they he, felt like smaller projects. Yeah, yeah. Not, not like a legit full length. But this this frame promo we're working on, this very day frame promo, will actually be like a video part. Right. I was going to ask what you guys were filming for while he was out here. Yeah, yeah. So that, or while you were out here. He's been filming a little over a year and just kind of been stacking on the side. And now we're like just kind of getting it all together. And, you know, it's, there's been like 
there's, we have like seven or eight different filmers that have helped contribute clips towards it. So yeah, nice. it's, it's coming together really good. That's good. And I'm pretty sure it'll hopefully be out and um, hopefully before Christmas is what we're aiming for. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, I'm looking through this list of uh, comments here. Somebody brought up the name Jerry Bagley. You got any good Jerry Bagley stories? Or were you not really around I mean, him yeah, back in the day? Yeah, that was um, some of the first trips I went on back then was like Moss trips. And like that was back when like Bagley and Arlene and Heath and those guys were on. So And that must have been kind of mind-blowing because they're like a little bit, uh, I don't know if it's just sophisticated, but they were definitely used to the industry and they had been yeah. around in BMX for a while and you were brand new, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I always like looked up to Bagley and those guys on like videos, like old videos and um. Yeah, I went on a handful of trips with him. He's a good dude, you know. I had a lot of fun, fun with him. I don't have any crazy stories or anything like that, but right. Yeah. What um, who would you consider like your favorite filmers in BMX these days? That's a hard one. Um, or just favorite filmers in general, because obviously I'm sure you take note from you watch skate videos. And stuff yeah, like that too, yeah, 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 definitely. Um, man, uh, so many guys. Uh, like Mike Manzuri is that new skate filmer. He's one of my favorites. Greg Hunt. Um, he just did the you know the van skate video. Uh, as far as BMX goes, it's hard to I like um, you know Ennis. Uh, gosh, I know there's gonna be so many people I can't think of right now. Um, who's the other filmers? Who's the other good filmers? John Hicks does good stuff. Uh, if I name anybody, then like, what if you say no? What if you're yeah. like, nah, not nah, him not so him, much. No. Yeah. I mean, Navaz, Christian, yeah. all the guys. I mean, there's just there's just such a long list of guys I can't even name them all right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean. Ennis Navaz, those guys always love everything they put out. Just, you know, the raw raw filming style is kind of what I like. Yeah. How about um, just well, raw in what way? Like, just not not using a bunch of fancy effects and stuff? Or? Well, I mean, raw in the, like, they almost, just because HD cameras come out and all this new gear comes out, yeah, we're all updated HD, but it still has the most raw feeling. You right. know, like, you watch an, an anything like Ennis makes, it still feels like he's filming it with a VX. Yeah. You know, so that that's my favorite kind of stuff to watch. What do you think of Above Below? I thought it was awesome. Yeah, was, yeah Rich Horn's so another one. Yeah, I yeah. should have mentioned him. He's great. But he's um, a sleeper. He does nothing to put himself out there. Yeah, so he deserves, yeah. he deserves to not be mentioned. Yeah. What's up, Rich? Yeah, no, Rich Rich is amazing. Above Below was great. Uh, right. The whole project was executed amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. When you say raw filming, sometimes I kind of think about the way that his shit looks because it's just sort of something. I mean, I don't know. If, I have a hard time describing filming because I'm not like super educated in it, but like, I don't know. There's something about Rich Horn's work that I really like. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely an artist with his. With his camera, and, and he's another good example. I was talking to someone. He's like, he's got the most basic kit. He's got like, yeah, like yeah. Panasonic and a DSLR. You don't. That just proves that you don't need a red. You don't need a slow mo cam. You don't need a drone to make a great video. He's almost. He claims when I went on these uh, above below trips with him or whatever, he claims to have almost no knowledge of, mm-hmm. of filming or camera gear or anything. I would ask him like pretty basic questions, like, and he would just be like, I don't know, I don't know, don't ask me. <laughs> like, he just he was almost. I, I couldn't tell if he was being facetious or not. Yeah. It seemed yeah. like he might, might have been, though. Yeah, I don't know Rich too well, but I've heard a lot of, a lot of amazing stories about him from yeah. all the guys that work with him. He's quite the character. Do you have any uh, like long-term goals for yourself in terms of filming or otherwise, like things that you want to accomplish within the like, next five, ten years? You know, I've thought about that lately. I mean, at this point in the game, I'm, you know, I'm 35 and been doing this for a long time now. I, don't, I just want to be happy with whatever I'm doing. I don't really have like a five-year plan as far as where I want to be. Maybe I'll still be filming BMX, maybe not. But I mean, I think like something I'm really interested in, maybe in the long term, is doing like a lot of music video work. Right. Yeah. Have you done any of that yet? I've done a few. Okay. A few on like on the East Coast, like smaller, smaller projects, nothing big. But uh, it's its own unique challenge, I guess. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's BMX is fun. You know, you're out in the streets, running around all over town, getting shots, and then you film a music video. You're like, I got everything right here in front of me. You don't want to get these cool shots. It's just like. No, I don't want to say easier, but well, it's, you have to um, pick. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think is funny is the fact that when you are editing a BMX video, you're taking all these things that have nothing to do with the song and editing them to the song. And then if you do a music video, and I haven't actually done it, but I've watched my friends do it, and it's like, oh, you're actually taking their lips, saying the words, and syncing those up to the music. Like <laughs> in a weird way, it almost makes me surprised when I watch music videos and they aren't matched up to the music perfectly because right. it seems like that would just be so natural since right. it actually is to it. I don't know. A lot of times, uh, I think. BMX and skate dudes pick up really good like music video editing skills along the ways because they just are used to like dealing with it. Right, like pacing and cutting yeah, the rhythm yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, totally. All right. Well, we're uh, we're reaching the hour mark. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to thank? Anything left that we should really talk about? <sighs> and what should we look out for coming from the mind of Will Stroud? Um. <clears throat> so, uh, well, upcoming projects. We're working on some new Verde videos, uh, like Tony Nair's frame promo. Um. 
yeah, there's a lot of stuff we got coming out for them. And then cinema video, we're doing individual parts like we discussed. So some cinema video parts will be coming out 2016. And then um, next year, full length that needs video. That's oh, like, so you've been helping out with that, right? Yeah. So Mike Manzori is editing it, but you've been helping film it? Yeah. Yep. So I've actually, uh, we just had a big production meeting at his house today, looking at all the footage from all the trips and um, just kind of devising a plan to have it ready for... How far along is that project? We're about a year and a half in right now, and we're looking at, we're about a year out, I think, okay. roughly. What's it like uh, working under Manzori? Is it, is it basically kind of like him telling you what to do? Is that the relationship or is it? No, he, he's, uh, he fully trusts me to just to go out and handle business on the trips and get him hard drives. And um, they've got him really busy. He's also producing a full length that and skate video at the same time. So they're kind of like giving me a little more, um, a little more responsibility. For but he's been going out and filming on some trips and stuff too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. He's been on a handful of trips, but um, there's been like a lot of trips I've been on where he's just tied up with skate stuff. So it's kind of like... Um, it's still his project, but he's just kind of less hands-on with it at this point. But he'll right. be doing most of the editing and stuff like that. See, I'm supposed to uh, interview him at some point. Yep. You know, it should be crazy. Mm -hmm. Is he someone, like, w going on these trips with him, do you feel like you learn stuff from him, like, just watching him film and stuff? Yeah, I mean, he's been doing it so long, and not many people know, but he, you know, he used to be used to be on the Etney Skate team. He used to be, like, pro skater for Etney's way oh, back really? in the day. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, he's been making videos for a long time, and he's, he's like, yeah, he's, he knows what he's doing. He's been really... Um, Really inspirational for me to what, work under him. What's it like uh, working for Pova over here? And do you think Pova will ever do this podcast? Uh, he says no. Uh, I think he should do the podcast. But, I completely uh, agree. You know, underneath all those layers of salt, there's a nice guy. Yeah, there's, there's got to nice be like, he's, he's got to be having a good day one day. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, got to be like a Wednesday in May with the sun shining where Pova's like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go talk to Adam on camera. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he'll, he'll get on here. He'll get on yeah. here. The rest, the rest of our audience might not care as much as I do. For me, it's a challenge. I'm like, come on, man. Just give, give me a little yeah. love here. All right. So uh, you got any thank yous that you want to send to uh, anybody out there? Yeah. Um, thanks to my kids, Noah and Stella, um, my family, um, everyone I work with, everyone at uh, Greenhouse, everyone at Etnies, um, all my friends. Yeah. Everybody that picks up a camera to make BMX look cool. Yeah. And so if people want to keep up with you on social media or on the web, what would be their best bet? Uh, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. And what is it? At Will Stroud? At, under, uh, at Will underscore Stroud. Okay. And yeah. you have a website or anything these days? Yeah. Uh, it's just 9to5films.com. Okay. Nice. All right. Well, uh, Will, thank you very much for coming in and doing this interview. Uh, everybody at home, subscribe to us on YouTube and check us out on SoundCloud. No Jumper is uh, also going on SoundCloud. God damn it. My phone's blowing up again. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That's it. Hi. I don't too much of a tool.